champion of the World Rally Championship and a long trip for the European teams to what the Maoris call the land of the long white cloud, otherwise known as New Zealand. Rally New Zealand used to take in the whole country. Now it runs on the fast gravel roads around Auckland on the North Island. No longer the wet winter conditions, the rally now runs in spring, meaning dry and dusty stages and a reluctance for any driver to be leaving until the last possible moment. Running first on the road comes within the job of sweeping away the gravel and giving the cars behind extra grip and speed. Top or bottom of the running order, New Zealand roads still require the utmost respect. The championship leader, Tommy Mackinnon, had to run first on the road on day one with disastrous consequences. His Mitsubishi was almost uncontrollable on the thick gravel and the Finn lost almost two and a half minutes to the cars behind. Being just one place down made a massive difference. Colin McRae lost only a third of Mackinnon's time on day one. He's quite well placed for a charge on the long stages of day two. Obviously this first one's important. It's 59 k's and it's straight out in the morning and everyone's a bit rusty. So I think this is going to be the one that, you know, we, have, we could take a bit of time if, if we can. One place ahead in third is McRae's teammate, Carlos Sainz. Richard Burns also struggled for grip on day one. Ending the day ninth and perfectly placed for the rebound on day two. The tactical driving backfired on reigning champion Marcus Grunholm. Peugeot sent one of their team into the stages to give Grunholm a target time. But the time was wrong, leaving Grunholm in second and seething with fury. Marcus, that mistake last night could cost you dearly today. Yeah, could be, yes. Uh, we will see. It's uh, still a long day to go, so I hope we don't uh, lose so much uh, time. But uh, it will be difficult. Kenneth Eriksson was happy to take Hyundai to their first lead of a World Championship rally, but holding on to it will be hard. It has to be flat out, do or die for you, really. Really, really flat out. I must go very fast on the on the on the fast section and try to be clever on, on the slow section. But it's a lot of speed today, you know, and it will be very difficult in this dry condition. So the situation going into the second day, the front runners can only hope that they don't lose too much time cleaning away the gravel. But it's from the places either side of tent where the attack on the lead will come. In particular, watch out for title fighters Burns and Ron Perra as the rally heads north of Auckland. Day two has moved from its traditional base at Monga Toroto to Ruawai. From there, eight stages, including the longest of the year outside the Safari Rally in Africa. This is the longest day of the New Zealand Rally, 176 kilometers in total. Stage nine, the big one, 59 kilometers from Parahi to Ararua. Over half an hour of night bench driving. Pleased to be leading, if not to be the first man on the road, Kenneth Eriksson still crossed to be as high as third, Carlos Sainz. The gravel and the dust from Ericsson's tyres, the very reason why first is not good on gravel. The more there is, the slipperier it is. Ericsson reckoned there was two centimetres of the stuff between his Michelins and terra firma. Ericsson drove like a bat out of hell, enjoying the road, but knowing that even a quarter of the way through the stage, his lead would have been lost. Damage limitation too for Grunholm, still annoyed by his team's failure to help him drop time on day one. He lost a second a kilometre over the 59 kilometres, even though he described his tyres and car as perfect. A win and the championship now almost certainly out of the window. Carlos Sainz lost 45 seconds, more than he hoped, because one of the two cars ahead was not using the same line through the corners as the Spaniard. Sainz might have been unhappy, but the crowd went wild in their showers of stones.
from the air the lines are clear using every centimeter of the road and a bit more Colin McRae was the first driver to start setting competitive times immediately he was up to second overall and confident of pushing for the lead Solberg was wary of wearing out his tyres on the Mammoth stage, but a puncture 20 kilometres from the finish also cost him time. The Norwegian dropping over a minute in total. In right over crash into short two left tightens, into two right minus tightens half long, into one left plus, opens two half long tightens, and flat short four right, 18. There might have been horns for Freddie Lights, but there was no charge from the Belgian. Picking two softer tyre compounds meant that every time he tried to attack, the tyres overheated. were right to hedge their bets with their two drivers even with brake fade Alistair McRae was 45 seconds better off than his teammate Ericsson after stage nine putting the pair just two seconds apart his spin at the end of day one had given Francois Delacour a prime chance to shoot up the leaderboard clean road and plenty of adrenaline had him on the ragged edge then it all went wrong. Riding inside the Ford, you can see Delacour lose the back end, fail to catch the pendulum swing, and wait for the scenery to come in the window. started to buzz with word of his speed he was over 20 seconds faster than even McRae the leaderboard was about to be thrown upside down where else would you find fans of possum born but in the trees the Kiwi hero was charging like rugby star Jonah Lomu up the wing like Solberg Oriol too backed off to conserve his tyres stage start and watch for the jolt inside from Perez Persia 500 meters into this massive stage he got a puncture but the moose system inside the tire activated carrying him all the way to the finish and fastest time if Robert Perra wins this rally it will be drinks all round for his Michelin tire guy Robin Perra's stage win put in spin just behind Marcus Grimhoff. But all eyes were on another flying fin. Having lost so much time on day one, could Tommy Mackin rise from the dead and scare the drivers up front? In one stage, he clawed back 28 seconds to climb from 14th to 12th. It would have been even better if he hadn't encountered dust from Toshi Arai's Subaru, and a Brooklyn windscreen wiper made back in the even worse. Yeah, 
why the tactics on day one were so important. Burns' rise to the top was meteoric. Ford's drivers do well to hold position. The dropping down, Grunholm and Ericsson, Solberg and Lloyds. At the service, Delacour's role would give the Ford's mechanics plenty to do in just 20 minutes. Francois suffered a roll on the last stage. He did it approximately 12 k's in when he clipped a bank. He didn't actually do a lot of mechanical damage, it was more bodywork damage. Plus he lost quite a considerable amount of time getting the car on the wheel. Fortunately we've managed to push the roof out, as you can see. The car is fully legal again now with a windscreen and we're just doing the tidying up now, ready to start the next stage. Quite easy for the mechanics to do all this in a 20 minute service? Yes, um, they, uh, they've done quite a good job of getting it back together. I won't say we train for this sort of situation, because hopefully it doesn't happen, but when it does happen they all rally to the cause. Pleasure and pain for the drivers who won and lost on stage nine. Richard, some lightning speed on that stage. You turned a 47 second deficit into a three second lead. Well, that, that was the plan. You know, we had a, a day yesterday which was quite tough. In the, it was difficult to keep a concentration just to just to go a reasonable speed and uh, not get it involved in a fight for the lead because today was obviously the big day. Yeah, it went well, we had a good time, um, we pulled a lot of time on Marcus and unfortunately Richard had a very good time as well and I think that's the, the sort of pattern for today, he's going to take as much advantage as he can and obviously try and carry it through in tomorrow, to, to tomorrow. Marcus, seventh on that stage, did you lose more time than you expected? Yes, a, a little bit more but I expect yes, I expect to lose uh, half a minute but now it was one minute. The hot topic of tactics needs a solution. In Australia in two months, drivers will be able to choose road positions. Here in New Zealand, the team managers met to decide if that will be a long-term fix. We have got together and we've come up with what we think is the best solution and we're, we're calling it the Australian solution at the moment that uh, the drivers choose their starting number depending on their position in the driver's championship and uh, we do that for leg one, two and three and uh, uh, I, I'm sure it's the best that we can come up with at the moment. Together, stages 10 and 11 were just half the distance of the previous monster. But with a straight fight for first in full swing, the crowds began to swell. The pain of dropping down the order over, Ericsson was relishing being out in front. But again, his position on the road cost him dearly. Another five places he dropped on the pair at Batley and Waipu Gorge. Kilos and kilos of gravel swept up by his tyres. Holmes' slip from success was more gentle but no less frustrating. He said he felt as if he was losing time everywhere. <laughs> Normally a narrow tyre wouldn't be good on gravel but the choice was forced upon Carlos Sainz as he struggled to find a way through to the hard ground. His third place was starting to look fragile. It might not be good for the drivers, but the carpet of gravel creates spectacular driving from the world's rally stars, feathering the throttle and seesawing at the wheel to keep the car between the trees. So often we've seen it this year, but once again a battle of Britain was underway between Burns and Colin McRae. McRae, though, was right on the ragged edge trying to stop Richard from opening too much of a lead. With the precision of a Formula One driver, he tucked his focus into the corners in a very British duel. Silence. Then Petter Solberg 
no longer trying to conserve his tyres with the rally and out and out fight to the finish. He had to hang on to every tenth of a second. From the helicopter, you can see Alistair McRae trying to stay on the line formed by the cars ahead. No easy task at over 200 kilometres an hour. With Ericsson dropping places, the Scott was now Hyundai's best chance of success. Right Since he was a boy, Richard Burns has wanted to be world rally champion. Twice he's been runner-up, and if he wins here, his chances at the title will improve considerably. He set fast his times on both 10 and 11 and started to pull away from McRae. The aim to open a gap of at least half a minute to save having to deliberately drop back for day three. Flat right, 80. Slight right, 70. Oriol looks safe in sixth and even capable of pinching fifth from team leader Grunholm. But the fastest Peugeot was the third one. Harry Robin Perrin was twice runner up to Burns on these stages and at the end of Waipu Gorge was fourth overall. Another two stages and another two places. Tommy Mackinnon was on the limit and waiting for physics to help him climb higher. Two more stages before any chance to service the cars. The stages might now not have been too long, but the wear and tear was still considerable. Ericsson's Hyundai, though, was right on soft. On song two, Grunholm's Pojo. How frustrating must that have been for the man who, before the start, believed that a win here would reignite his championship chances. Sparks light up as sights his dust as he tries to use every part of New Zealand for his rally and to keep Rob Perra from Spain. But to no avail, by stage 13, the Spaniard was down to four. Whoops of delight from the Kiwis, but Colin McRae was now 25 seconds behind Burns. Freddie Lloyd's lost control of his Mitsubishi and lost more time. Looking a little lopsided, Delacour's Ford, another winning chance gone. for Richard Burns. For the fourth stage in a row, Burns was the man, but his pace came with risks, 100. big risks. Slight lane. 100. Lane max in. 70 flat right Titans. To flat right. 60. Flat right. 100. Flat left. To flat left. Minus cut. Today, on his side. Ditch out. 250. Stevie Oriol's aim was to keep Peter Solberg from edging close enough to pick six in the last championship point. <laughs> Robin Perra didn't want the last points, he wanted the most points. Next on his hit list, McRae in second spot. The man from Japan, Toshi Arai, was pleased to be 13th in the Subaru, but out of sight he spun on stage 12 losing 25 seconds. Nothing if not consistent, another two stages and another two places gained for Mackinnon. This time up to eight, but this was not the way he was hoping to keep his title hopes alive and say farewell to his old car. After that 
mammoth run of four stages. Burns his lead, 25.3 seconds from McRae. From Perra up to third. Grunholm down to fifth. Richard, four stage wins on the top, but a rather hair-raising moment on 13 for you. Yeah, I just, uh, I was, I've been pushing very hard, obviously, and I braked a little bit late for a sixth gear right corner. But it tightened a little, and we went off on the outside into a uh, hit a bank. But fortunately, even just left it in sixth gear, it bounced off, went up on two wheels, back onto the road, and, and carried on, which was, was very lucky. I thought we were going to have an accident there. You've got a 25 second lead over Colin now. Is it going to be tactics on these last few stages, or can you win from the front? I think uh, if we get, we, we stay about where we are then I'll be pretty happy, yeah. Richard's pulling just under half a second to K at the moment, and uh, obviously Harry's pulling a bit as well, so if he continues to do that, then you know, it's more or less decided tonight, unless he has a problem, so uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a disappointment, but, but you never know, I mean, there's, there's still a long, lot of miles to go tomorrow, and we'll, you know, we'll keep pushing as, as long as there's a chance there. Cassidy, Mitatai and Toka Toka, the last three stages of the day. As for the rest of the day, Grunholm attacked the roads as if his season depended on it. By now, Ericsson had plummeted out of the top ten, but Grunholm hung on to fifth, a brave drive. Sykes knew that any chance of climbing the leaderboard would now come on the final day. He was still furious about tactics, but not unhappy to be fourth. Another 10 seconds, McRae lost over the last three stages to Burns. This time it was he who made a mistake hitting a concrete fence on stage 15. The time loss was minimal though. Freddie Loikes was one of the drivers who suffered most on day two, dropping out of the points to 10th. But by the end of the day, his rally really started going wrong. Out of sight, he'd had another off. This time, though, the damage was extensive. Burns now had made up his mind that he was not going to drop back. His charge continued and his cushion to McRae was now 42 seconds. Theoretically, that was enough, but only time will tell on the final day. <laughs> McRae's accident allowed Harry Robin Perra to close within 23 seconds of the Scot. Smelling a chance to close in on the title, he'll be charging on day three. Mackinnon's rise from 14th finished at position 7. Half of the time and half of the places lost on day 1 regained on day 2. Expect more of the same on day 3. The final stage of the day and over the crest comes Australian Cody Crocker in a Subaru, getting it all wrong into a frightening series of barrel rolls. He and co-driver Greg Folletta were taken to hospital, concussed. Again, you see it, he gets out of shape, the rear wheel digs into the ditch, and over goes the car. But this was Richard Burns' day, taking a 42-second lead from Colin McRae and looking favourite to win the Rally of New Zealand, up to third, Harry Robin Perra. And just out of the point, but probably not for long, Tommy Mackinnon from Peter Solberg and Alistair McRae. Richard, a day of sheer speed today, and a day that might mean you have victory tomorrow. It's been, yeah, a perfect day. I've, I've been trying extremely hard, obviously, to make sure that we had as big a gap as possible going into tomorrow. Uh, I've been off a couple of times, but fortunately, safe places. Championship-wise, it's very good, six points. Tommy's... Uh, Pretty well back. Richard's taking the lead, so I mean he's he's not that close in the championship. So it's you know it's, it's looking pretty good. If he not can cut uh, Colin today, is tomorrow is not possible. But uh, sure, it's a it's a big fight for top ten cars tomorrow, and everything is possible. And if something small mistakes coming.
Just weeks ago, Richard Burns thought his 2001 title hopes were over. Today, he's proved they're very much still alive.